Uh, good evening from the swamp. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle. We have a vitally important hour for you tonight. Late breaking revelations and details uh, on this Kavanaugh story. Another delay tonight in the Kavanaugh vote. What's, what's really going on with this accuser? And is an FBI investigation warranted? Mercedes Schlapp of the White House will be here. And former intel chiefs are bristling at President Trump's decision to declassify important documents related to the Russia investigation. But what are they scared of? What are they hiding? And Hollywood, as Hannity said, showing once again why Americans are watching less TV today. Raymond Arroyo is here with a report on the Emmy Award train wreck. But first, the rush to judgment. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Listen closely to the media coverage of the 36-year-old accusation against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, and the chorus is hard to miss. We have Dr. Ford's credible allegation. She has nothing to gain here. The receipts were there. The story is credible. I don't think anyone doesn't believe her. I have every reason to believe that she's going to show that she's a very credible uh, witness and that her story is very credible. I believe uh, Dr. Ford, as I refer to her, because she makes a very credible uh, case. This is a situation where you have serious and credible allegations of, of rape. Now... We're led to believe that these are credible allegations. They're all reading from the same playbook. But given the age of the charges, what's the standard for credibility? Has any evidence been produced? Is there any corroborating witness? So far, the answer is no. In fact, the only other person named in the accusation says it never happened. And given what we know of the accuser's political inclination and her support of left-wing causes, it's not unreasonable to believe that she has a political axe to grind. The hyperbolic, overheated reaction to these charges is somewhat reminiscent of what happened to the Duke lacrosse team more than a decade ago. Remember, in 2006, the Duke lacrosse team hired a pair of exotic dancers for a party at a rental house near the Duke campus. And one of the dancers, a black woman, claimed that three of the lacrosse players brutally raped her in a bathroom. Dave Evans, the captain of the team and one of the accused, he spoke to the media the moment he learned of the charges against him. First, I want to say that I'm absolutely innocent of all the charges that have been brought against me today, that Reed Seligman and Colin Fernie are innocent of all the charges that were brought against them. Every member of the Duke University lacrosse team is innocent. You have all been told some fantastic lies. Well, the media seized on the story, spinning this stripper's credible accusation into a tale of white privilege, misogyny, and just pure evil. A media swarm and rush to judgment followed. The Duke lacrosse coach, Mike Pressler, who stood by his team in the face of these false allegations, was fired for it, and the young men's reputations were dragged through the mud. Only later did we discover that the three accused men were not near the dancer long enough for the alleged assault to have happened. One of the three men accused was a mile away at an ATM machine. And thankfully, it was captured on security video at the time of the alleged incident. All three men were eventually cleared of the charges. North Carolina's then Attorney General Roy Cooper, in declaring their innocence, said the men had been victims of a tragic rush to accuse and a failure to verify serious allegations. The crusading Durham District Attorney, Mike Fong, who cooked evidence and raced to prosecute, was disbarred and convicted of contempt for his actions. Now, this should be in a different fact, but it's a cautionary tale as we weigh and determine the credibility of allegations against Judge Kavanaugh. At least the Duke lacrosse case was kind of contemporary when it comes to the timing, with witnesses and a crime scene. 36 years later, Ms. Ford can't recall exactly when, or where her alleged incident even took place. Yet throughout the media, the drumbeat goes on and on, and there is an implicit message that senators dare not submit the accuser to any tough questioning as they did with Anita Hill. 
I remember sitting in that hearing room watching Anita Hill endure character assassination day after day from Republicans. They know that they can't attack her directly and say she's making it up. That's what they did with Anita Hill in 1991. Today, that probably wouldn't fly in a Me Too era. We must not repeat the mistake of the Anita Hill hearings. They were rushed and were a debacle. Do we want to repeat that mistake? Debacle. Well, I actually think the Republicans have learned the important lesson from the Anita Hill hearings. They've learned that the only way to deal with last minute he said, she said allegations is to refuse to be intimidated and to proceed fairly and methodically. But the more salient question is have the Democrats learned any lessons about the toxicity of false charges? coupled with a media pylon as demonstrated by both the Duke LaCrosse and the Clarence Thomas cases. Do they recognize that a rush to judgment is not only unfair, but destructive to the process and to individual lives? Every accuser has a right to speak out, but should be obliged to have his or her allegations challenged, and sometimes aggressively so. The accused, meanwhile, should not be presumed guilty. And he or she should have every opportunity to clear his or her good name. Now, Chairman Grassley has dedicated Monday to a public hearing where both Judge Kavanaugh and his accuser, Ms. Ford, have been invited to appear. Kavanaugh is ready. But according to reports out late tonight and a letter from her attorney, Ms. Ford wants the FBI to investigate her allegations before... She agrees to appear. That was a late-breaking letter that her attorney submitted to the Senate tonight. Well, the question is, who will blink first? Listeners to my radio show had a message today for Republicans who failed to stand up for Kavanaugh and a fair process. If the Republicans don't do this, uh, I'll be voting, but I won't be voting for Republicans. They've done this so many times. They have no, no backbone. They have no spine. I am infuriated. The reason we voted for Trump is because of his outstanding SCOTUS picks. If they don't push Kavanaugh through, they will never seat another Supreme Court judge, especially a man. I have been traveling all over the country attending Trump rallies, and I can tell you firsthand, if the Republicans don't grow a backbone and support Kavanaugh and vote, take the vote now, they're going to have hell to pay come November. Well, in a way, though, this shouldn't really be about the midterms, right? This should only be about whether Judge Kavanaugh is qualified to sit on the highest court of the land. We all have to ask ourselves a question. Should a charge made by one person, decades late, impossible to prove or to rebut, be enough to damn the reputation of someone with decades of honorable public service. Someone whose jobs in government required no fewer than six previous FBI background checks. And shouldn't all of us, regardless of party, consider the poisonous precedent that that would set? And that's the angle. Joining us now with reaction is attorney Helgi Walker, who worked with Brett Kavanaugh and the White House Counsel's Office, along with Nicole DeBoard, a former sex crimes prosecutor. Nicole, uh, I want to start with you because tonight uh, the attorney for uh, Ms. Ford has told the committee the, her, her client is not ready to proceed to testify on, mon on Monday. This was 24 hours after she had said on the Today Show that her client would basically do anything she needed to do to get her testimony forth. What's going on here tonight? I, you know, I think this is a really interesting wrinkle as well. I mean, the reality is, is that she basically went out on the air on a variety of different TV appearances and essentially said, I want to testify. I want to tell my story. I don't think that the vote should be had until I've had a chance to tell my story. And it sounds like what they're doing is giving her an opportunity to tell the story. And now she says, I want to wait. This is an interesting wrinkle. I do think that it's better for everyone if she has the chance to air what it is she has to say. The reputation damage has already been done. He might as well have an opportunity to rebut it. Uh, this is the risk with having to vet accusations of this nature years and years later after the alleged incident. Uh, Helgi, uh, also in this letter tonight is the following paragraph. In the 36 hours since her name became public, 
Dr. Ford has received a stunning amount of support from the community, fellow citizens. At the same time, however, her worst fears have been materialized. She's been the target of vicious harassment and even death threats, uh, saying that her family was forced to relocate out of their house as a result of this. So she wants an FBI investigation of witnesses, I guess locations. How would this possibly proceed? We're also going to talk to an FBI former spokesman uh, in, in a few moments. But how, how is this a process that could proceed at this point, Helgi? Laura, it's, it's already any chance for a fair investigation has already been polluted. Because as most lawyers and, and your viewers understand, you, you, don't, you don't start with the Washington Post expose and then investigate. The FBI investigates discreetly, quietly. All the witnesses, uh, many of them, have already had their opportunity to get their stories straight, delete their social media accounts, you know, perhaps get rid of documents. That's not how investigations work. It, the process, the chance to have actually a fair investigation where the FBI can do its job the way it's supposed to has already been destroyed by the way the Senate Democrats have handled these allegations. Well, uh, Hillary Clinton tonight said that there should be a two-week pause, a two-week pause on this process. Uh, to, that should be enough to do an investigation. The accuser doesn't even know where this occurred. And the only other person she can state that was at this party uh, says it, it didn't happen. So what, is, what is there to investigate here? Help me out. Well, there are a lot of missing elements of the story, and that's why she was offered an opportunity to come forward and testify and tell her story, which is what her lawyer said she wanted to do. If you're going to make an allegation like this, you cannot... You, you, you can't hide. This is it can't an important be hit and run. matter. It's the yeah. future of the Supreme Court. Nicole, it can't be hit and run. This is what, um, I'm going to play this first, I'm going to get to Dianne Feinstein. This is Senator uh, Hirono, who uh, said this today about whether the accuser really needs to testify at all. Let's watch. Why should we participate in a victimization of someone who has the courage to come forward? And she is under absolutely no obligation to participate in a smearing. Guess who's perpetuating all of these kinds of ac actions? It's the men in this country. And I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. Nicole, what's your reaction to that? You know, the reality is, is that this is a decades-old criminal allegation. The statute of limitations on prosecution, based on the story that I've heard and the explanations of what may have occurred that I heard, have passed. And now what you have is somebody who is in the position of having to defend themselves against this quasi-criminal charge all these years later. I agree. Maybe an investigation is appropriate, but there's no reason that all of the questioning that was set to take place couldn't take place anyway. Uh, she's Nicole, already told the done, story multiple times. Yeah, you've done the, uh, sex crime prosecutions. Ha have you ever come across anything like this with uh, something that's alleged so many years later with really very little in the way of details? A lot of times these cases are he said, she said cases. Uh, and even having something that occurred weeks in the past is a difficult, is a difficult situation uh, for everybody involved. We're not talking weeks. We are talking years. We are talking decades. Um, you know, the FBI certainly should have the opportunity to go out and dig up whatever they can find, location, yeah. possible witnesses. Uh, it would help everybody to have yeah. verification of any of these details. But the yeah, fact well. of the matter is, is they should still be able to proceed with questions. All right, guys, uh, and it's not just Brett Kavanaugh uh, the media is going after. It's anyone who dares to question his accuser's credibility. In the end, the all-white and all-male members of the Judiciary Committee attacked Anita Hill's credibility, and Thomas went on to be narrowly confirmed, 52 to 48. But there was a political backlash. The next year, 1992, was called the Year of the Woman, as a record 24 women were elected to the House, and four women joined two others in the Senate. Joining me now with reaction is Mercedes Schlapp, White House Director of Strategic Communications. Mercedes, thanks for coming in tonight. So thanks great of you to be here. Me. All right, this is completely wild. Even, of course, heard what we just talked about. But we now have Senator Blumenthal coming out saying the following. I want you to react. I think the nomination should be withdrawn. The bar here is not whether you have not criminally assaulted someone. It's credibility, trust, integrity. This nomination will not only cast a shadow over 
Judge Kavanaugh, if he were ever to be confirmed, it will also stain the United States Supreme Court irreparably. Mercedes. This is the most predictable playbook for the Democrats. The Democrats from day one have said that they are not going to be supporting Kavanaugh for, for a very long period of time. They're even refusing to take meetings with him. And then they wait at the last minute for Senator Feinstein to come up with this letter from this accuser on Brett Kavanaugh after we've seen 32 hours of testimony by Judge Kavanaugh, after they've had closed committing hearings, and after they've given him over a thousand written questions. And what are we seeing, Laura? We're seeing the fact that none of this, in regards to this accusation being made, was brought up to the attention of Judge Kavanaugh. And so it's very clear that it is the, the politics and the delay tactics that the Democrats keep pushing forward. And this is just one more example coming from Senator Blumenthal, not allowing uh, this to be resolved in the sense that, as we know, Judge Kavanaugh has been very consistent in saying, I categorically deny this you, horrific accusation. Do you think uh, Blumenthal and, and others like him, do you think they're really up at night worried about Christine Blase Ford? Are they, is, is this what they're motivated by, protecting women? Uh, I mean, what the Democrats are worried about is the fact that they know that this is that Judge Kavanaugh is incredibly qualified to be on the Supreme Court. It's Roe versus Wade, isn't it? That's in, the, the word. In about their Roe. mind, it's not just only Roe versus Wade, but it's the fact that he is going to be that strict constitutionalist. That he is the one that's going to interpret the law, follow precedent, and and this idea that they feel like they're losing this battle. And I feel that that is just unjust because we know, Laura, looking at the fact that you've had individuals from a variety of legal experts, those in the legal community supporting Judge Kavanaugh, knowing that he's well respected in the legal circles, and the fact that they want to tear down his reputation, try to ruin his good name, while this man, Judge Kavanaugh, has said, I am ready to testify today. Oh, we should have, a, lot of, a lot of conservatives think they shouldn't have delayed this hearing at all. Letter from uh, the accuser's attorney tonight. Deborah Katz, as the Judiciary Committee has recognized and done before, an FBI investigation of the incident should be the first step in addressing your allegations. A full investigation by law enforcement officials will ensure that the crucial facts and witnesses in this matter are assessed in a nonpartisan manner and that the committee is fully informed. She's not going to be testifying on Monday, only when an investigation is conducted and underway. Will the White House insist? that this hearing go forward on Monday? Look, we are going to allow the Senate Judiciary Committee to make these decisions. It is in their hands. With that being said, Judge Kavanaugh has said, I will testify. I will testify publicly, But this is privately. a delay tactic, and this is political is now. So what is the, a, 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 what's the White tactic. House's political reaction to what is clearly a political move by the Democrats and by, uh, by her Look, attorney, who is a Democrat it, activist? It is incredibly disturbing that they keep stalling, that they keep waiting. Why do you think they're doing that? Well, I mean, you, you know why they're doing this. They, they know that, the, that October 1st, Supreme Court convenes. They don't want Brett Kavanaugh to be confirmed. It's very clear what they're, again, like I mentioned, what their playbook here. And the reality is, is that when you have Judge Kavanaugh, someone who is beloved, they someone who has, they don't care. They don't care. They, they don't care. And, and he's someone with such high integrity, someone who I personally worked with. I mean. Laura, we were both single. We were both in an office together dealing with judicial nominees. He was professional, respectful to all women. The, the, it goes on and on, but yet they are willing at the last minute to throw something out there to see if it sticks when they had over six weeks to bring this up. And that's what's so disturbing. That's why it's just, it, get, it gets to the point so that you have the, to realize that they are trying to ruin Judge Kavanaugh's Is, is reputation. the White House prepared to insist to the Senate or strongly recommend to the Senate to go forward with this Monday hearing or to just to convene a vote? Look, at the, the Senate Judiciary Committee will need to make that decision. We stand by Judge Kavanaugh. He is willing to testify publicly, privately, however the Senate deems fit. Two he weeks is from transparent. Now, three weeks from now. He is forthcoming. He wants, we need to get this done. Uh, Mercedes, thank you for coming in tonight. We're going to be watching very closely over the next few days to see how this all develops with Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh's accuser is now demanding a full investigation by the FBI before testifying in front of the Senate. And a former top FBI official is here to tell us why that's an absurd request. Stay right there. The uproar surrounding the Brett Kavanaugh nomination to the Supreme Court is taking yet another dramatic turn this evening. The lawyer for Christine Blase Ford says that Ford now 
will not testify in front of the Senate. Oh, that's a shock. I predicted that. Without a full investigation by the FBI first. But just moments ago, Chuck Grassley, the ranking uh, Republican on the committee, just released a statement saying he will not move Monday's date. Yes. Joining us now with reaction is former FBI national spokesperson John Inarelli. John, uh, Grassley obviously did the right thing. This is the worst gamesmanship I've seen when it comes to Supreme Court uh, confirmation. But the idea that the FBI has a role here, Hillary Clinton tonight said that there should be a two week pause in the proceedings so facts can be gathered, witnesses can be interviewed. And the, the process should be slowed down. Your reaction? Well, I think Hillary would also like a recount if she could have one. But the reality is former presidential candidates don't get to decide what the FBI does. The reality is the FBI conducts national security investigations for these types of incidents. That investigation has already been completed. There was nothing derogatory found. And that's why it's moved forward. To go back and do an investigation now would not serve any purpose for what the FBI does. Well, this, this has come up in the last 24 hours because I think they got all ahead of themselves because this, this, this woman comes out, makes this allegation, says she didn't remember many details, except apparently what you know the, 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 the judge allegedly did as a high school student, but doesn't remember where it was, when it was, but now somehow the, she wanted to testify 24 hours ago, 24 hours later, no, now hot potato ticket to the FBI. Now, what, if you're an FBI official and you have stacks of stuff to do, you're now sent on a wild goose chase to go and so, you know, scour every Chevy Chase Maryland home for who has a pool and where was there a pool party 36 years ago? You know, something may have happened to this woman. We shouldn't discount that she has a memory of something, whether or not it involves Judge Kavanaugh or somebody else, because it's been 36 years. Memories fade. But more importantly, this is the type of crime, a sex offense that's being alleged. It's handled by the local authorities. The FBI does not have jurisdiction for those cases. Um, a federal law enforcement official told Fox tonight it's totally inappropriate for someone to demand that we use law enforcement resources to investigate a 35-year-old, 36-year-old allegation when she won't go under oath and can't remember any key details, including when or where it happened. Well, law enforcement is only going to investigate something if there's a cooperative witness. The first thing this person should do, whether through her attorney or herself, go to the local police and make a complaint. Let the local you authorities. Can't. The statute of limitations is passed. There is no complaint you can make. It's well, in, in Maryland, depending upon the crime, there may actually still be a statute of limitations. But unless there's something that could actually be prosecuted, a prosecutor says, "Yes, we're going to investigate." The prosecutor is going to take this case, John. Come on. I mean, 36 no years later, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. You're being much more judicious. This is a late in the game allegation made after a guy has had six FBI background checks. His character has been attested to by, by dozens and dozens of women who work with him, who dated him, went to high school, college, worked with him after. And I'm one of them because I've known him for 28 years. And what is happening, and now the, uh, the, these Democrats out there saying, we have to go to the, the FBI? I mean, this, I mean can, we, can this get more ridiculous at this point? Well, and I want to be clear that I'm talking about the process. If you have a complaint, there's a method to do it. Don't make the FBI your political animal to try to handle things the way your political party may want it to be. All right, John, thanks so much. And in reaction to the accusations by Christine Blase Ford against Kavanaugh, we've heard a constant refrain. She has taken a polygraph. She's a credible person. These are serious allegations. I think it's amazing that she passed that polygraph. In fact, I would love it if maybe Judge Kavanaugh wants to get on the, we call it being in, on the box. We are immediately questioning her credibility, despite the fact that she has passed the polygraph test. But are polygraphs taken seriously? Well, joining us now with answers is Thomas Moriello, a former polygraph expert at the DOD and a current professor of criminology at the University of Maryland. And we're also joined by Peggy Nance, the president of Concerned Women for America, who is herself a rape victim. And she has serious questions about Ms. Ford's claims. Thank you to both of you for being here today. Thomas, I want to begin with you on the reliability of polygraphs, because I think a lot of people out there hear, oh, she passed the lie detector test in August. What does that really mean? And how 
important would that be, even if this were a prosecutable crime? It means absolutely nothing. First of all, we have to understand that the polygraph is not a lie detector. It has never been, and hopefully it never will be. And I never use the word pass or fail. I either say successful or not successful. But when somebody says they've passed the test, that simply means that uh, they didn't react to certain questions that were asked. You have to ask, what were the questions? How were they, how were they asked? How were they formulated? What did the examiner say to you before the test began? All those things affect how a person is going to react. And most importantly, what is the reaction? It's not a lie. The reaction is simple. Your sympathetic nervous system hearing a question and deciding whether it's threatening or not. And it could be threatening for a lot of different reasons other than yeah. uh, you're going to tell the truth or not. All right, Peggy, setting aside the polygraph uh, issue, which I think we just demonstrated clearly is, is, is not some big, you know, plus or, or minus in this case, you have serious doubts about the case as it's alleged, the incident as alleged. Why? Well, and I, first may I correct you, I actually am a victim of a physical assault and attempted rape. And that was over 20 years ago, but I can tell you I remember every single detail. And, you know, I think probably something did happen to this woman, but we should all want justice. And there's no justice in, uh, in destroying a man's reputation, destroying his career based on uh, allegations that, you know, are unprovable. And so I, you know, all of this, uh, the Democrats hope that this is more about gender identity politics, but concerned women for America are still standing firmly behind Judge Kavanaugh. We will be there Monday in support of him as we've been uh, throughout this process. It has been a circus. I have watched as they have disrupted. Activists have yelled and screamed and disrupted the decorum of the Senate. I've seen women parading around as handmaids and believe me, it, I, as I tell you, grown men dressed as human condoms. This has been a circus, and it's an outrage, and this is this has really uh, damaged the, the credibility and the dignity of the Senate. Well, I want to play another soundbite, and this goes back to what John Inarelli was talking about, about the, this idea that, well, we'll wait two weeks. We'll do an investigation by the mm -hmm. FBI, and anyone who doesn't think an FBI investigation should go forth is clearly anti-victim. You don't want women to be hurt. I mean, it makes no sense. Of course we want her to be heard. She can be heard on Monday. Uh, she, I think she could have been heard on, you know, today or, or maybe tomorrow or Friday. Or, but she could be heard on Monday. She doesn't want to be heard. Kamala Harris came out today and said this. Let's watch. I believe that, there sh that the FBI, Nora, to your point, mm -hmm. is, is, is should be compelled to do its job in terms of doing, uh, completing their background investigation. And that's not being done. They haven't completed the background investigation. I want to go to John again on this, because th th you see what's happening. The senators are lining up, pointing at the FBI. So it's either, well, she passed a lie detector test. Uh, this, is, this is, she's representing all women who've been victims of, of sexual assault. She's kind of a representative of women. And again, God bless her, whatever happened to her. But now it's FBI, do your job. And anyone who stands in the way, you're part of the problem. You're anti-woman, you're anti-sexual abuse victim. The FBI's job is to conduct a national security investigation, which has been done. It's not taking a position on women issues, political issues, et cetera. And to be ordered to go do something that is out of the realm of what they're supposed to be doing is trying to politicize the Bureau. Well, and remember, Dianne Feinstein today said she can't even say that everything is truthful mm. that uh, the accuser uh, is accusing Brett Kavanaugh of. Uh, everybody, thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. Thank the you. Democrats are in a total frenzy over the Kavanaugh accusations, as we've been talking about. So naturally, they're applying the same standards to the domestic abuse allegations against Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison, right? <gasps> Don't hold your breath. Details next. It makes me go back to 1999 when uh, Dianne Feinstein, along with every other Democrat, refused to read my deposition to the independent counsel. They wouldn't have nothing to do with it. Uh, that just shows you the difference in the double standard that existed back then and still does today.
Well, that was Juanita Broderick speaking about her experience dealing with the Democrats when she herself brought claims of rape against former President Bill Clinton. And sadly, it seems much has not changed. While Democrats howl for answers from Brett Kavanaugh and an opaque charge, they aren't asking the same of DNC co-chair Keith Ellison. Last month, his former girlfriend, Karen Monahan, alleged that Ellison sent her threatening text messages and once screamed obscenities at her as he dragged her off a bed by her feet. No calls for his resignation, and the investigation the DNC said it was launching, well, pretty much gone silent. Joining us now with reaction, Monica Crowley from the Center for Policy Research and Anthony Tall. It is an attorney and a Democratic strategist. Uh, let's go to you first, Monica. It's wild to go back and, and think about what was said back in 98 and so forth. But tonight, uh, Hillary Clinton was asked about, you know, due process uh, regarding sexual assault allegations by Rachel Maddow. Let's watch. Have we learned anything over the years about due process, not just for the accusers, but also for the accused? Well, I think that you have to take each of these situations, you know, sort of on their own uh, merits. <laughs> Monica. Well, uh, that's rich coming from Mrs. Clinton, whose own husband uh, was alleged to have raped Juanita Broderick, my good friend, and sexually assaulted any number of women. And she not only stood by her man, but she also led the charge to discredit, smear, and threaten those women who dared to come forward 20 odds uh, years ago to accuse her or her husband. Look, Laura, this is the rot of hypocrisy. The Democratic Party of today uh, is now back to being the party of Bill Clinton, full of hypocrites on this matter. We just saw the case of Keith, Keith Ellison. And, uh, you know, in that case, we've got police report, we've got an alleged video, and yet little to no media coverage. So what we now see is that the Democratic Party is willing to shield potential women abusers in the name of politics, ideology, and promotion. Anthony, uh, this is Karen Monahan. her uh, comment on whether the, her party, Democratic Party, believed her allegations. She said, uh, no, they don't. I've been smeared, threatened, isolated from my own party. I provided medical records from 2017 stating on two different doctor's visits. I told them about the abuse and who did it. My therapist released records stating that I've been dealing and healing from the abuse. That's 2017. It's not 36 years ago, but not a peep from the Democrats who care so much about women, Anthony. Well, there, there, I think one of the problems with her story is, is that, you know, there's a lot of Democrats that don't believe her story. I believe there's something about some text messages and uh, the text messages haven't been there and been supported. Now, with regard to Kavanaugh, at least in, the, in, in this case, the accuser does have a corroborating witness with regard to the therapist, which is for, which was like 2012. So I think that's one of the problems yeah, Anthony, with her story. Anthony, wait a second, I wait do a think her. Is it 2017? She talked to her therapist in 2017, medical records that were released, uh, doctor's, uh, doctor's notes, uh, and she said she's been smeared, including apparently by Democrats. And you said, well, the problem is Democrats don't believe her. No kidding. That goes to the point some, well, well, some allegations well, have merit. The allegations against Democrats have no merit, and the allegations against Brett Kavanaugh from 36 years ago should end a Supreme Court nomination. I mean, Ellison well, well, is in Congress. Well, well, I well, I, well, well, he has a two-year term, and this guy is going up for a term that's going to last okay, so that's six it? years. I, hey, I, I, Laura, as a criminal defense attorney, trust me, I believe that I believe that Judge Kavanaugh should have a right, and I believe that everything should come out and he should be heard. I'm all in favor of that, but I hope at one point in time that he realizes or he feels as. as all of the people, whether they're poor, whites, blacks, or Hispanics that's come before him, now perhaps he sees how they feel to be accused of something and just have the whole system come at them, whether it's fair or unfair. So I think this is a good thing for him to learn. Laura, this, Laura, oh my so, God. so Keith Anthony, Ellison is... Anthony, I adore is, you, but oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Uh, Keith, uh, Keith uh, Ellison uh, uh, it's is... It's a good for thing for him to learn? It's, it's, a, it's a complete, utter outrage. Monica, sorry. Yes. I, that's, that's, that's just ridiculous. Just to Go be ahead. clear about Keith Ellison, he is the Democrats' number two man, number two of the DNC, and he's currently running to be attorney general of a major state, Minnesota, and he probably has higher political aspirations than that. So the idea that the Democrats are protecting him while go, running wild on uh, Brett Kavanaugh is, is a disgrace. Laura, this is all about 
the broader war on Donald Trump and his agenda. Brett Kavanaugh is just the latest proxy in this war to take down this president, undermine his agenda, make it stillborn, and destroy all of his appointees and anybody who dares to serve this president or to be appointed by this president. It is about Roe versus Wade, of course, but it is also about undermining and ultimately taking down this president. Anthony, do you think that the accuser should be testifying on Monday? Her lawyer said she would testify yesterday, do anything to get her story out, but now she's not testifying on Monday. Well, yeah, it was my understanding that she was going to testify. I think she should testify, but now she's saying she wants the FBI to investigate that this situation. And remember, this is not unlikely for victims to come forth with years later. That happens all the time. I believe that uh, Kavanaugh has a right to uh, put his side of the story out, and I believe she has a right to put her side of the story out. Right, but one FBI thing that we need to remember the, this, is in, that this is a lifetime appointment. Right. This is okay, a lifetime appointment. We're getting to something. Okay, when you say that, th that's what this is about. It's not, I, I think most people like, we'll never get to the bottom of this. This is about the Supreme Court. It's not about whether you, you're protecting women or you think this is a woman's issue. This is just rank politics. And I think the more that we just say that and dispense with this idea that we're going to find out what happened at a pool party in 1983 is just, you know, it'd just be easier for everybody. It's just about whether you're going to have a lifetime appointment on the court, period. But it's not about, I don't think it's about women. Otherwise, they'd be concerned about Keith Ellison. Guys, but thanks Laura, so much. But Laura, no, we're you, out of time. You can't, you sorry, can't we're out of time. We're going to go, go to, uh, okay. we're going to go to black, black space. Uh, critical Russia probe documents ordered declassified by President Trump set to become public at any moment. We've got new details on the political earthquake that may follow in a moment. It was big news last night. President Trump taking matters into his own hands with regard to the declassification of materials related to the Russia investigation. This is hot. He calls for these uh, documents uh, to be declassified. It's already sent shockwaves through the intel communities, both past and present. One of the president's biggest critics leveled this challenge on Andrea Mitchell's show. Christopher Wray, uh, director of FBI, and Dan Coase, director of national intelligence, as well as Rod Rosenstein, who is overseeing this investigation, should push back against any directive that is going to have negative impact on our capabilities, as well as the investigation. If Mr. Trump in the White House does not relent, well, then I think they have some decisions to make, whether or not they're going to just uh, not follow that direction and be fired or to resign. So Brennan is like, Telling people to just practice rank insubordination. Okay. Joining us now to discuss Fox News contributor, former White, uh, former House Oversight Committee Chair Jason Chaffetz. He's also the author of the book Just Out Today: The Deep State, How an Army of Bureaucrats Protected Barack Obama and Is Working to Destroy the Trump Agenda. Uh, he joins us now. Jason, this is wild, uh, and it's good timing for your book uh, out today. Here we got Brennan saying what he said. Clapper comes out tonight on another show and says it's unethical for the president to declassify this material. What of this? The president of the United States, Donald Trump, he is the only constitutional officer that the people have entrusted to make these decisions, not these other yahoos. And I know the president was talking about revoking their security clearances. I hope that's already happened. If they need another excuse, uh, there it is. But the president's pushing for openness, for transparency, for accountability, everything the people want. And why are the Democrats so scared of this? Because their little charade is going to be exposed. Adam Schiff came out today, and he talked about a red line. Let's watch. This is what the director of the FBI, the Republican-appointed director of the FBI, Mr. Murray, uh, has told us in terms of it being a red line and it should be treated at a gang of eight level. This is what the deputy attorney general, appointed by the uh, administration and Republican president, has told us. So this is the view of the intelligence community and law enforcement, and that ought to be respected. All right, he can tell him, but yeah, yeah, the head of it, law enforcement, the head of the intelligence is the president of the United States, Adam Schiff. And when you put out your document saying that if Devin Nunes released his memo, remember that a few months ago, that the world would burn to the crisp, it didn't happen. You have no credibility, Adam Schiff, none. Well, what's just interesting about this is that We've learned things in dribs and drabs about first the insurance policy. Then we learned that there really was no evidence of Russian collusion to even kick off the F FISA warrant application. 
but they had to scramble. Then there were media leaks. There was a strategy, yeah. it looks like, of media leaks. So there was a constant feedback loop to indicate more of a need for more surveillance and more of an investigation and then move it on to uh, Mueller. And I think the more we learn about this, Jason, the uglier it gets. And I think that's what Brennan is sweating about. No, his little charade is about to be exposed. They all thought that Hillary Clinton would become the president of the United States. All of this would be covered up and we would never hear about this. And then the unthinkable happened, a transformative president, an unconventional president in Donald Trump. And all of a sudden they are scrambling. You have Director Comey advocating, vote for Democrats, because in this election, they want to shut all this investigation down. <laughs> They want to shut it down, and that's what would happen if Adam Schiff became the, the head of the Intel Committee as opposed to, say, a Devin Nunes. Exactly, and uh, thanks so much, Jason. Last